Hi, I'm Juha and I'm a hockey player here at USC. I will be going through some fixed concepts and examples with you this semester. And remember, just like on the ice, there's no such thing as luck in physics. Just keep your head up and work hard. In this video, we'll look at the uh, drag forces related when an object is moving through fluid, let's say air or water. As an example, let's have a ball that is falling through air. It of course has gravity acting on it, and then some drag force, Fd. Maybe a better example would be uh, falling through water, because in that case the velocity would be smaller. It doesn't matter what the fluid, we, but uh, in that case when we have a uh, small velocities, the drag force is k, some constant, that depends on the size and shape of the object, and its velocity. So let's make it that for, that is slow speeds, like this. And we can uh, address the drag force mainly to three mechanisms. First of all, if we think that here the water or air particles, they are impacting the object, slowing it down, and also when they flow past it, there will be some friction between the two media. And of course, when the uh, air gets past, it just doesn't flow past, it uh, forms some kind of vortices behind it and this usually creates uh, lower pressure, which tends to uh, pull the object back. But all of these uh, effects are combined in this uh, uh, constant k that is experimentally determined. Let's see what the Newton's second law has to say about this situation. So we sum all the forces in the vertical direction Fy and uh, let's have our positive direction down, so then we have mg minus the drag force kv, and uh, this equals ma. First let's consider the case that the uh, kv exactly equals mv, and this is of course possible because when the velocity picks up, the drag force increases, and at some point they match, which means that uh, the object is in uh, equilibrium, the net force is zero, so it will be moving at constant speed at that time. And that speed, if we solve from here, is called the terminal velocity. The object can't go any faster. So it would be, in this case, mg over k. So that is the maximum speed that the object can achieve when it has certain coefficient k. And of course large k means lower, slower terminal velocity. And uh, let's write this again, the Newton's second law, fy. So mg minus kv, and instead of claiming that it is zero, we call it ma. And what is a? Acceleration in general is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So uh, let's do that. dt. And from this equation, if we integrate it like we did in the case of velocity earlier, one can come up with the following expression. It says that the velocity as a function of time is mg over k, so this is the terminal velocity, times 1 minus exponent of minus k over m times t. And if we plot this curve or this function 
this is what we get. So that's the uh, dark green here. And one can see the effect of uh, terminal velocity quite clearly. So as uh, t increases, in fact goes to infinity, this whole term goes, goes to zero, which means that we approach the uh, terminal velocity vt here. We actually never get to the vt, but we get arbitrarily close to it. And this uh, behavior of velocity is in stark contrast with the uh, assumption when there is uh, no drag. So in that case, the vt is the usual or the familiar accelerations, acceleration times t. So in most cases, uh, neglecting the uh, drag leads into a substantial error in the calculations. So uh, this is what we get for slow speeds. And uh, usually when balls are falling through the air or car is driving on the road, uh, this model just isn't sufficient. And it's better in that case modeled by the drag force being Fd equals d, another constant, times v squared. So uh, let's call this the fast speed model. Of course you can ask yourself uh, what happens if the speed is somewhere in between. Uh, I'm sure there's uh, another model or several models for that, but uh, we just uh, stick to this strict separation between slow and fast cases. Now if we uh, apply the Newton's second law in this case, so mg, and then we have the minus drag force g, or v squared, and we are just looking for the terminal velocity. So we look at the situation when gravity and the drag equal. So, and if we solve from here, we get v equals uh, square root of mg over d. And this is again the terminal velocity. And uh, one such example when this uh, formulation is useful for, is for example a skydiver that is falling from an airplane and the uh, terminal velocity in that case is about 200 kilometers per hour and uh, that value again changes or depends on the, the d and d changes according to the shape and the size of the object like we saw in the slow speed model as well. Mm -hmm.